nah, it's it's getting, it's just getting worse day by day, more conflicting. What is going on with this case? Look at this. Somebody, somebody gave this to me, right? I want you guys to look at this. One of those men was my uncle. They didn't freeze to death outside. They were laced with fentanyl. I'm David's mom, and that's what I'm hearing too. And if I find out that he did this, I will make sure that he goes to jail for it. Family members battling with the suspects, suspects battling with other suspects, lawyers battling with lawyers. Everybody in this whole case, everybody is bumping heads with everybody. All because of these three poor victims found dead here. Now, I'm reading this and it's like the only people that would know more in this case would be the family. The family. Oh, most, most importantly would, would be the, the suspects in this case. But who's going to tell us? This man's mixing up his story. Much conflicting answers. We're going to jump into the videos in just a few seconds. Don't go anywhere. And now, Willis conflicting with his own lawyer? Lawyer's taking heat from it now? What is going on? Somebody better tell me something. We're going to get this. We're going to, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to understand this today. We got to understand what the hell is going on today. What's going on, guys? My name is Nov. Welcome to Chronicle, where we talk about true crime, breaking news, and trending stories. Hit that like and share button on Facebook. Hit the follow if you're new. Over at YouTube, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. And share it to any of your social medias from YouTube to anywhere else. I would appreciate that very much. Here on Chronicle, we're different. We get the facts. We get straight to the stories. We take calls. We, uh, we, we cross-reference data, and we make sure that we get the facts, and we check it for you live here on this podcast. We don't play around here. I got multiple videos and articles to read to you. I don't want to waste any more time and talk your ears off. I do apologize. We're going to start off from yesterday to literally a video, a video uploaded one hour ago, or I think 57 minutes ago, from right now. Here on Chronicle, this is where you get the best. We get all of our information from every source, from all social medias. We get involved. Enough with the talking. Let's get active. Let's go. I'm dead outside of a friend's home after they'd all gone over to watch a Kansas City Chiefs game with him. The three buddies came to this house in Kansas City on January 7th after watching the big game against the Los Angeles Chargers. Two days later, their bodies were discovered right here in the backyard. A friend of one of the victims expressed outrage on Facebook. He knew people were looking for them. He read messages of people searching for him. My husband banged on his door for 20 minutes. My friend banged on his door and then busted a window and yelled and announced her presence. And still nothing from him. Nothing is adding up. Local. Okay. I started off the podcast with this video. I want you to remember what he just said, right? That nothing is adding up. Now watch this. All right. Now I want you to remember that small part of that video. Remember that. That's going to be important for later. Because now we're going to jump in to this new developing story. We got um, another... You guys want to hear an interview with the lawyer again? Really? Because we're going to do that. When's the new name for Chronicle? Yes, Chronicle's going to be gone. It's going to be another new name. I'll, I will announce it very shortly. Let's watch. Hit that share button. Chiefs fans. I only mention that because of the rest of the story. Ooh. We're found frozen to death in their own friend's backyard. And the friend claims he had no idea they were there for two days. 
Two days, Karen. Karen has more details on this one. Really unusual case. They all came over for a big party for a game. You know, it's just the five friends coming over to watch the game together. So now the Kansas City police are awaiting the results of autopsies and toxicology from the medical examiner to determine the cause of death and how to proceed with the investigation. So the three men, all in their mid to late 30s, healthy guys there, go over to their buddy's house, whose name is Jordan Willis, and they watch the game, Chiefs Chargers, on January. You're watching a new video, guys. All these videos and information is brand new today. Hit that like and share button for me, guys. I would appreciate that very much. Uh, Corey Lynn says 200 stars. Thank you uh, for all you do. I love the excitement you get. You're so welcome, Corey Lynn. Thank you. January 7th. Then nobody sees them, and all of the families get really, really worried, and they go over and they knock on the door, and no one answers. Finally, one of the fiancés goes over, breaks into the house, finds a body on the back porch, calls police. They find the other two men frozen in the backyard. So then the homeowner tells police he saw his friends leave through the front door that night. He went to bed. He sleeps with headphones on and a loud fan. Didn't hear, anything, didn't hear anybody knocking on his door. Said he stayed inside all day Monday and worked from home on Tuesday. And he was used to his friends leaving cars at his place, so he didn't think anything of it. Didn't see the text from the worried family members. But the men's families and a fifth friend who was also there that night are not buying that account. I'm furious. Everybody's furious. Nobody believes this story. Now, did you see, did you hear that and listen to that, right? That person is the same person that wrote this. You see where I'm getting at now? You see where I'm getting at, right? Oh, we're not done. We're not done. I got a whole bunch of other stuff to show you. We're not done. I'm furious. Everybody's furious. Nobody believes this story. Nobody believes it. They got drugged and were drug out the back door and put in the backyard. I want to know exactly what happened. This is a cover-up. Something's, something's wrong with the, with the picture. These are his buddies. Had he seen those guys out there, he would have gotten them help immediately. So the families accuse the homeowner, Willis, and his attorney of changing their story about, you know, did they see them and sewed him out the door? Did he just go up to bed? So Willis has since moved out of the house. And again, we're still awaiting those reports on the toxicology because people want to see if drugs were involved in any case right. and what happened. But it's a very um, bizarre. Correct. Toxicology will be so important. Okay. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Just a matter of days, everyone. Okay. That sometimes takes weeks. All right, Karen, thank you. Seven thirty. It does. It does. Just a matter of, I'm telling you. Well, the, excuse me, medical examiner report, the autopsy. But the, the toxicology does take weeks. Yes, correct. Uh, I believe it does because they got to test for multiple stuff. We got more videos, guys. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. That friend that left must know something. Alex Lee? I doubt I'll get an exclusive interview with him. I doubt it. That, that man will not talk. That man will not talk. Alex Lee, if that's his name, um, he's not going to talk to me. I'm, I, don't, I think people, I'm not saying that I'm intimidated, but I'm, I'm going to ask brutal questions. That I'm, we, need to, we need to know why. We need to know why. Did you see the national news? No. You can tell me or DM it to me. All right, guys, new video. Let's go. We're found dead outside of a Kansas City home following a Chiefs viewing party. An attorney involved is now changing his story once again. This has been a back and forth here. The tenant's lawyer saying another friend, a fifth person, was still there after his client had gone to sleep. But the other friend telling our News Nation affiliate in an exclusive interview that he wasn't the last person to see the three men alive. And when he left, the tenant, Jordan Willis, was still awake. See that? It's like somebody is what somebody shifting blame here. Somebody shifting blame. Willis is like, well, no, I wasn't the last one. You was the last one. And Alex is like, no, Papa. I left. You was the last one awake. This is what I'm saying. This is what I was trying to tell you. The battle, it's the battle. And it, it's 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 here. It's happening. It's that battle. This Mr. Alex is saying this. Willis is saying this. Lawyers are bumping heads. Lawyer bumping head with his clock. It's, it's, this is, did you hear that? Did you hear it? Did you, look, listen.
News Nation after his client had gone to sleep. Yep. But the other friend telling our News Nation affiliate in an exclusive interview that he wasn't the last person to see the three men alive. And when he left, the tenant, Jordan Willis, was still awake. It's like somebody's pushing, they're just pushing blames on each other. Personally, if I was in this case, I would rather work together. If I'm drunk, high, or whatever you guys did, try your best to talk together and think. I mean, three people dead. I can understand why, why, why you're saying these things. Correspondent Elizabeth Pran has been following this one. All the details. Elizabeth, what are we supposed to make of all these changing stories? What's to believe? I know, Marquis, there is a lot. Like you said, our affiliate Fox 4 has been on this story. As you mentioned, it's been two weeks, multiple storylines, and now we're getting it from two attorneys. So that fifth man is represented by an attorney named Andrew Talsh, and he is speaking to our affiliate. Oh, I want to see that. Hold on. That's Alex's lawyer. Chat, that's Alex's lawyer, right? That's Alex Lee's lawyer, right? So that fifth man is represented by an attorney named Andrew Talsh, and he is... Andrew Talsh. Attorney Andrew Talsh. Talsh. I want to get him. I want to get him here. I want to see. Andrew Talsh, Washington, Seattle. Andrew J. Tulse? Is that him? I think I got him. Chat! Chat! Alex has a high-profile attorney. I'm looking at it right now. Andrew J. Tulse. Is this him? Hey, you got a website. Wait. Wait, is this him? Did I find him? I don't know. I'm, I'll, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Are you nonprofit Andrew Tulse? Andrew Tulse blog. I want to see this guy. This is the lawyer that was saying, "Hey, Will, hey Willis, no, 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 it's conflicting. You're wrong." Oh my gosh, Chad! If I can get that. is speaking to our affiliate and he says his client arrived at 7 p.m. and left at midnight that night and that all of the men were watching Jeopardy at the time. So the three men, including Jordan Willis, who was renting the home, the three men are Ricky Johnson, Clayton McGinney, and David Harrington. So what we're also learning is that their families were sending desperate texts on that Monday afterwards, the days following, to both men. This again is inconsistent because Willis is Wait, hold on. You guys heard that? I'm going to go back again one more time. Hold on. So what we're also learning is that their families were sending desperate texts on that Monday afterwards, the days following, to both men. This, again, is inconsistent because Willis's attorney, his name is John Paserno, told us that there was only communication via Facebook. Uh, so we've gotten multiple storylines from John Paserno, including one that he gave our own aunt, Ashley Banfield, essentially telling Banfield that the men walked out, that he saw them walk. Okay, let's read this real quick. Cause I think what she's saying here is very important information. Prior to being contacted by police, he did not receive any phone calls or text messages from friends and family members of the deceased. Two people came to his house. However, he did not hear them as he sleeps with earbuds and a loud fan. This is his statement. I am going to get a copy of this actually right now. Hold on. One of those people, the wife of one of the deceased, tried to reach him via Facebook message. Unfortunately, he did not see the message until after the phone. Ooh, but that's not what the fifth person is saying. You see, he said that he didn't receive anything, but then the fifth person contacted him. Ooh. Somebody's lying. Did I see the interview with Kumo? I did. I did. I, got, I got, actually got two of the interviews. I got the 10-minute one, and I got the 6-minute one. Come on, guys. I'm on top of this. I got y'all. This is why you guys tune into Chronicle. I don't play. I got it. I got it. We're going to get involved. Congratulations for the 11K. I know. We hit another 1,000. Crazy. I know. I don't know what I'm doing right. Um, there we go. You know what we can do? How about this? 
Who, who did not receive any? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Boom, boom, boom. Wait a minute. I can get it. I can get it. Let's do this. Got me a fake copy. Let's go. Let's go. And Ashley Banfield, essentially. This again is inconsistent because Willis is. See, fifth, you see this? Fifth friend text tenant with no response. Doesn't that sound familiar to you guys? You see, the families of all the victims that sadly passed away, may they rest in peace. They contacted, they contacted Jordan Willis. No response. You see, it, it doesn't say here that the fifth friend texts him via Facebook. The fifth friend sent him a text message. He didn't respond either. That sounds familiar, right? Sounds just like exactly what he did to the fiance and the rest of the family on Facebook. This is why I believe the family, when they say, he read our messages. You see, it's always our word against theirs, et cetera, et cetera. Who do we believe? I don't know. But what it sounds like is I would favor and more with the family if they told me that he read their messages because he texted them directly. How can you miss a direct text? I can understand Facebook because it goes to your message receive or request. That didn't get, no. He texted them directly. He texted his phone. That's a difference, guys. See, when you get a text from message request or et cetera, it doesn't pop up sometimes as notification. It doesn't. A text message pops up right in front of your screen. Got him. Got him. Got him. You, you, you ignored these families. You did. Just like you ignored this fifth person. This is what I'm saying that something is not right, Willis. This is why I'm saying... You're acting a little funny with your lawyer. This is why I keep saying that everything that he has done is all red flags. Not answering the door from the family, ignoring the bangs, the breaking of the glass, not seeing the bodies, not seeing the cars, saying it's stuck going to bed for two days, crashing on the couch, earbuds, loud fan for two days. Answering the door with a wine glass? Saying that you don't remember? Saying that your friends, saying that they froze to death? Why would you say they froze to death? You, a person that didn't do anything would have never said it. They would have said they don't know what happened. If you didn't do anything with this, which I don't know, you damn sure ain't making yourself a good case. And let me, let me, let me, let me be clear with something with you, Willis. You are not making your case any better over all your statements and what you're doing and the co and contradictions in your in, in, in what you say. But you know what else? You know what else is not helping your case? This Artard right here. This guy right here is not helping your case whatsoever. Brit text on that Monday afterwards, the days following, to both men. This again is inconsistent because Willis's attorney, his name is John Paserno, told us that there was only communication via Facebook. Uh, so we've gotten multiple storylines from John Paserno, including one that he gave our own aunt, Ashley Banfield, essentially telling Banfield that the men walked out, that he saw them walk out. But he told local media this. As people do, they get tired. They're, they're people who are very close to you. Um, and then you feel comfortable going, going to bed and allowing them to leave whenever they want to leave. What police do tell us is that there were no signs of foul play at the scene and that uh, Willis is cooperating with attorneys. But now, Marquis, we are just simply waiting on the toxicology and the medical examiner report. Yeah, obviously none of us know what to make of this. There's still a lot to figure out, but you would think the attorney might stop talking until there was one story <laughs> that, that he had it boiled down to. We'll, uh, we'll see uh, what the next one has in store. Elizabeth Pran, thanks so much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to Last time I checked, my f I don't just go to bed 
and my friends go in and out of my house. I mean, where I live in New York, we don't do that. We do so, like if I, like my very best friend since childhood. I would like go to sleep and he'll be here, but then he'll be like, "Yo, bro, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna head out." I'm like, "All right, bro, have a good night. My bad, I fell asleep." He'd be like, "No, no, you, you good, you good, you good, my dude, you good, you good, you good. That's it." But I don't fall asleep, and he enters my house back and forth with a, a groups of people. It just does, it's not like that. It's not formal. It's not. No, no, no. People are saying on Facebook, I'll ask for a refund. <laughs> Facebook is crazy. Facebook, do me a big favor. Hit that like. It, uh, Facebook, we have only 46 shares, but we have over 400 people watching over at Facebook. All we need is 60 shares, 60 more Facebook, my lovely people over at Facebook. But we do have 100 likes. Can we get 100 more? Let's reach a personal goal. Let's all work together. Um, if you just tuned in, hit that follow button. I would appreciate that. Over at YouTube, we, got, uh, we went from 100 to 600 people over at YouTube. Hello, YouTube. What's going on? Um, we had... Close to 700 now. We got only 180, 151 likes. Let's hit that like button for me, guys. I would appreciate that so, so much. All right. You guys ready for the Kumo interview? This interview is supposed to be, like, really good. And this is the new one. This is the one that just happened today. And look who it is. It's with the amazing Artard story switcher, Willis. Excuse me. Persono, not Willis. I mean, Willis, Persono, same difference. They're the same thing. They both switched their stories. Corey Lynn with the 100 stars says he left the house to go get the U-Haul. So how did he not see the cars? The U-Haul was after the whole incident. Th this interview is stupid. Was Why? Wait, why? You saw this? Wait, is it bad? There you are. I was watching reruns. Lyra, no, this is live. We're live here on Chronicle right now. We're watching new videos right now. Get involved. If all of that is true, there is still a question. This has to be about drugs. If it, or, you know, booze, drugs, whatever it is. Because if they're not shot and they're not stabbed and they're all dead, um, it just strains common sense to believe they could have wound up in this predicament if it wasn't done to them without drugs. Uh, it is the elephant in the room. What is the position of your client? As I told you last night, Chris, I'm not in a position to comment on that at this time for a variety of reasons. Not well, why on that question? I don't understand that. Why? Look at the question he asked him. Common sense to believe they could have wound up in this predicament if it wasn't done to them without drugs. Uh, it is the elephant in the room. What is the position of your client? As I told you last night, Chris, I'm not in a position to comment on that at this time for a variety of reasons, not just on behalf of uh, Jordan. Um, and when and if the toxicology report comes out and when we get it, I'd certainly be happy to comment on it at that time. I'm not going to speculate about the activity and the behavior of other people who were not in the presence of my client um, at some point in time that evening or early okay. morning hours. And look, we both understand the dilemma. OK, if the tox comes out and they had whatever it is in it that makes this a more understandable situation, he's now going to be chasing his responsibility as opposed to being in front of it and owning what happened that night. Uh, and one of those is a much more satisfying thing in terms of credibility. You aware you're aware that that is the that is the dilemma here. No, I, I don't see it that way. And, um, you know, he has. Uh, an attorney and I'm representing his best interest and uh, he did nothing wrong. And that's that's what we're saying. That's what we're maintaining. And that's what we're going to say, no matter what comes back in that autopsy report. Right. Well, something's going to come back. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Listen to what he said. And that's that's what we're saying. That's what we're maintaining. And that's what we're going to say, no matter what comes back in that autopsy report. No matter what comes back in our autopsy report. So in the autopsy report, if something shows that someone did something, they don't all just commit suicide like, like Tom, what is that? Colt, Tom Jones, was that it? Jim Jones? They didn't do all, th they didn't do that. So if it clearly shows signs that someone did this, it doesn't matter what he's saying. 
It doesn't matter. What is this? Just innocent always? Stop. Stop. You're not fooling nobody. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. This is the problem with lawyers. It's all about money. It, it is. It's all about money. That's all that it is ever about with them. Starry night with the five. Starry night. I'm not. It's the first time you did the super chat? How did the girl who broke in find the deceased man on the porch before? I think she broke in and the path from the basement, she went. Wait a minute. If she entered the basement, how did she miss Willis on the couch? If he slept on the Wait a minute. Hold on. If she broke into the basement and then made it to the backyard, how did she miss? Ooh, I would love to talk to her. Hold on. I've got to come back to that. Start night. Good job. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to that. I just, you just made me find out something. How did she miss him on the couch? So you telling me how she broke into, how did she get to the, how did she get to the back? In my mind, I'm asking, how did she not see him on the couch? I just thought of this. If she was in a basement, what direct? <sighs> right. Well, something. Uh, an attorney and I'm representing his best interest and uh he did nothing wrong and that's that's what we're saying that's what we're maintaining and that's what we're going to say no matter what comes back in that autopsy report right well something's going to come back and i will Absolutely. give you a platform at that time and we'll discuss it because things just never don't make sense eventually it will make sense in response no so the so starry night the, the deceased man was not inside she found the deceased man on the porch outside and then the cops found the other two. She didn't find the other two. She didn't. She didn't. So Clayton's fiance discovered a body on the back porch. She didn't find all three bodies. She only found one. When she found the one body, she called the cops immediately, which led the cops to investigate further and they found two more bodies in the backyard. That is why this case is even more messed up. I'm sorry to keep pausing this, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Let me play it fluidly. I do apologize. My apologies. I'll let it play. Sorry. You know, he has uh, an attorney, and I'm representing his best interest. And uh, he did nothing wrong. And that's, that's what we're saying. That's what we're maintaining. And that's what we're going to say, no matter what comes back in that autopsy report. Right. Well, something's going to come back. And I will Absolutely. give you a platform at that time, and we'll discuss it, because things just never don't make sense. Eventually, it will make sense, and the responsibility will lie where it does, and we'll take it to its logical conclusion. John Pacerno, thank you very much Absolutely. for being with Chris, us again. Could, yes, I would like to address. I would like to address those the, the phone calls and the text messages, if I could, since the oh! reporter left that hanging out there. Go ahead, because the initial so, suggestion was he only got a Facebook message, and nobody was really trying to get him. Uh, Malik says that's not true because uh, the fifth friend says that uh, he was getting messages and he was trying to find them and he wasn't getting his messages answered either. So what is it? So I have sent your staff the records, his phone records, which I acquired this afternoon, and also the text message records. And during that period of time, um, the phone calls that came in on uh, the early morning hour after the game on the 7th and the early morning hours of the 8th, all the way to the 8th, and then all the way to the 9th when the police came. Um, the only calls that came in were one from his dad, which we recognize the number, and you have the actual numbers. Mm -hmm. And then the other calls, there were eight of them that came in from what is a dummy number. He has a robo killer app on his phone. And so when calls come in that are unrecognized or for whatever reason, they read as this dummy number. I've dialed this dummy number myself. It's a non-existent number. You get a message saying whatever. It's a dummy number. And then the only other call that came in was a 
All zeros, a call that he blocked again from a RoboCop. What as far about as text? The text messages? Yeah. RoboTech. Ro yeah. As far as the text messages go, what you have, there are a series of incoming text messages. That's all we have. There are no outgoing text messages. So the corollary to that, what goes along with what makes sense to that is when you and I get a text message, typically we're going to respond. If somebody texts you and says, hey, these three guys are missing, and then you're- Whoa, whoa, back this up, back this up, back this up, back it up, back it up, back it up. Hold on, please, no, oh no. Back this up, hold on. Robo messages, robo texts, robo, what the hell is robo? Have you guys ever received robo stuff? What the hell is robo? Can somebody tell me what is robo? What the hell is a robo what? What is robo? I have never heard in my entire life. I got scam callers. I got telemarketers. What the fuck is a robo? He's saying he has a robo blocker on there for unknown numbers. It's a call blocker for blocked unknown numbers. What? Mary Bellman with the 100 stars. Thank you. Patricia June with the 200 stars. Thank you so much. And Lachelle Walton with the 100 stars. Thank you guys so much. I don't understand this. Hold on. I, can, I, can I back up just a little bit, guys? Let, I want to understand this. When calls come in that are unrecognized or for whatever reason, they read as this dummy number. I've dialed. They're unrecognized. They read as this dummy number. This dummy number myself, it's a non-existent number. You get a message saying, whatever. It's a dummy number. Why the fuck would you get eight of those at the same time? Hold on. This is ridiculous. Hold on. This is... Hold on. This is... I... She broke in the house first and then saw the, uh, the body. Sorry. She broke in the basement from the back of the house, correct? I don't know. I, I, I believe it's the side. I'm going to be honest there. I think it's the side. But again, I'm not too sure. I, all I know is that she broke into the house. Then she found the body. That's, that's, that's all I know. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. And then the only other call that came in was a, all zeros, a call that he blocked again from a RoboCop. What as far about as text? the text messages? Yeah. RoboTech. Oh, yeah. As far as the text messages go, what you have, there are a series of incoming text messages. That's all we have. There are no outgoing text messages. So the correlator. A series of, wait, what? A what? There are a series of incoming text messages. That's all we have. There are no outgoing text messages. So who, who's the, it? are you going to tell us? The, the incoming text messages? You're just generalizing. You want to tell us, like you said, well, then tell us who. So the corollary to that, what goes along with what makes sense to that is when you and I get a text message, typically we're going to respond. If somebody texts you and says, hey, these three guys are missing and they're your friend, you're going to respond. If but he didn't respond. You're not getting to the point. Alex had said, the, uh, if someone had said to him, your, uh, the text message came in. Why don't you respond? You would respond to your friend, right? That's what you would do. Maybe. The reporter wanted to twist my words when I said he didn't receive any messages. Hmm. But And technically, I'm right. His phone received the messages. If you don't look at it, you did not receive the messages. I guess I should have said he didn't read the messages. Hmm. And yes, as far as the text message from his friend, he did not tell me about that. And when I were informed of that, I asked him about that, and then he told me that's right. So there's two text messages, or excuse me, a Facebook. What did he say? That's right. What did he get the message from Alex or not? Message and a text message, uh, and neither one he got before the police arrived at his home. All right. But the phone records that you have are consistent with him. If you look at them, uh, the calls were early in the morning. Yeah, and we have his them. dad called at noon, and he picked up. He didn't pick up any in the morning. He didn't pick up any in the evening when he would have been sleeping. There were no other phone calls. And the text messages, 
The same way there's no outgoing text messages those two days, right. which, as you know, who can stay off their phone for two days straight unless you're principally sleeping it out of it and you don't have your phone around you. Mm. So everything is consistent with what he's saying. Hey, thank you for... No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Yo, he... Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Everything he's saying is like he's dancing around... This is bullshit. Wait a minute. Hold on. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is so bullshit. Guys, with your permission, can I rewind it from when he started talking about the text messages? I just want to better understand this. Or you guys want to move on? It's better if, we, you know, you watch a movie the first time and then the second time you understand it more. I just want to rewind that, that part. Is that okay? Can I, can I please do that? I know you guys want to move on. I had the 10 minute interview. I just want to understand this because it sounds like, nah, wait a minute. Now, there is a part that I do understand. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be biased here. I do understand one part was when he said, um, uh, the Facebook one, the Facebook, the Facebook one. I do understand it because sometimes I don't, when I get messages, they don't pop up. Everyone he's saying is bullshit. Can I please? A bunch of bull, bull jive. Keek Ziki said over at YouTube is crazy. I think the guy, somebody said, Lisa said, I think this guy needs his own lawyer. Okay. Can I replay it? Just a small part, guys. Go for it. Rewind it. Yes. Okay. I love, I love, I love Chris. I love this guy. Okay, let's 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 understand this. You guys ready? Let's all listen, okay? Let's all listen to this to this fucking bullshit. Let's listen to this. Guys, hit that share button. Facebook, we need 30 more shares. 30 more shares. Danny D with the 145 stars. Thank you so much. Rebecca with the 200 stars. She says, love your dedication to this story and getting down to the truth, Robin. Thank you. Rebecca, you are amazing. Lachelle with the 100 stars again. She says, why did she uh, break in and not look around? And no matter where he was asleep, not awake, but outside, found the body. Michelle, I don't really know the context of what she did inside. I just know that she broke into the basement and found him out in, in, a, in an outside porch. We can revisit that if you like. I can, I, can, I can revisit that, okay? Also the text message records. I told you it was all bullshit. Heather, yeah. And during that, that uh, he was getting messages and he was trying to find All right, them, let's listen up, guys. Messages answered either. So what is it? So I have sent your staff the records, his phone records, which I acquired this afternoon, and also the text message records. And during that period of time, um, the phone calls that came in on uh, the early morning hour after the game on the 7th and the early morning hours of the 8th, all the way to the 8th, and then all the way to the 9th when the police came, um, the only calls that came in were one from his dad, which we recognize the number, and you have the actual number. The only calls he got in was one from his dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other calls, there were eight of them that came in from what is a dummy number. He has a robo killer app on his phone. And so I am not surprised at this. You know why? Because why would David and anybody else have his number? He was just the other friend. You understand? Why would his cl close friend's mother have Willis's number? I'm not surprised at that. People calling his phone, I'm not, guys, I'm not, that's not going to, no, I'm good on that. As for the Facebook, I want to know if that's true. I do believe the family. I do believe their family. I do. That's what we need to pay attention to. He's ignoring everybody, his own father, but why? For two days? He said for two days because he was asleep. Stop it. Stop it. A, a grown elder, even elderly people don't even miss one phone call or a text for two days. And so when calls come in that are unrecognized or for whatever reason, they read as this dummy number. I've dialed this dummy number myself. It's a non-existent number. You get a message saying whatever. It's a dummy number. And then the only other call that came in was a all zeros, a call that he blocked again from a RoboCop. What so about you see what I'm saying? A RoboCop. What the? Is that Elizabeth Cologne? Starry Night. Is that Elizabeth right here? Is this the Elizabeth that I was talking about? I'm going to pin her. Is that is that the right one? Text messages? Yeah. Robotech. Oh, yeah. 
As far as the text messages go, which you have, there are a series of incoming text messages. That's all we have. There are no outgoing text messages. Okay, who are these text messages? I want to know if it's Alex. That's what I'm trying to say. He's not being specific here. Let me know if I missed this. So the corollary to that, what goes along with what makes sense to that is when you and I get a text message, typically we're going to respond. If somebody texts you and says, hey, these three guys are missing and they're your friend, you're going to respond. If Alex had said, the, uh, if someone had said to him, your, uh, the text message came in, why don't you respond? You would respond to your friend, right? That's what you would do. Maybe. The reporter wanted to twist my words when I said he didn't receive any messages. Mm. But, and technically I'm right, his phone received the messages. If you don't look at it, you did not receive the messages. Bull fucking shit! Oh my God! Oh my God! This lawyer is bull fucking shit! He's trying to say that if you text my phone and I don't read it, oh look, I didn't receive it. What the f What the hell is that? In no context, I have never heard in my entire life living on this planet, someone's gonna tell me, I text you, did you receive it? Oh, I'm not gonna say, I didn't receive it because I didn't look at it. I'm gonna say, oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at my phone, I don't know. I, because I didn't read it, I didn't receive it. This man is a scientist. You think he's gonna have his phone off? His messages off or no, do not disturb? Stop it, who are we bullshit? You're not gonna sit here and bullshit me. No. No. The whole entire two days, he didn't read not one text message? Am I listening to... Let me rewind it. I know I'm not fucking going crazy. If Alex had said... The, uh, if someone had said to him, your, uh, the text message came in, why don't you respond? You would respond to your friend, right? That's what you would do. Maybe. The reporter Maybe. wanted to twist my words when I said he didn't receive any messages. Mm. But... And technically, I'm right. His phone received the messages. Stop it. Stop it. Technically, I'm right. You're not right. You're, you're not right. Your phone received it. You know what she... Are oh, you fucking trying to tell... It. The reporter would have said he read the message or didn't read it. The reporter said you received it. You're a fucking joke. You're a joke. You're a fucking joke. You're such a tool. You're a joke. You're, you're such a joke. You're such a joke. Technically, I'm right because he didn't read it. You know, that, that's not what the reporter said. Receive that in the phone. This is an extension of part of you. You paid the bill, right? You read it all the time. Why these two days you didn't read it? Listen to this shit. Listen to this fuck shit. But, and technically, I'm right. His phone received the messages. If you don't look at it, you did not receive the messages. I can't listen to this. I guess I should have said he didn't read the messages. And yes. You're a lawyer. You know what? The, stop it. You're trying. You're, it's confirmation bias. You're trying to sound correct. You're not. As far as the text message from his friend, he did not tell me about that. And when I was informed of that, I asked him about that. And then he told me that's right. So there's two texts. You see? He's not answering. Guys, listen to me. Listen to me. When I asked him about that, he said, that's right. What? That's right. What? Did he receive the message from Alex? Yes or no? He's not answering the question. He's dancing around. He's, he's not answering the question. Okay, so Oh my God, Lachelle with the 100 star says, I think the lawyer is high on drugs. Yo, listen to what he said. He said he didn't read the messages. And yes, as far as the text message from his friend, he did not tell me about that. And when I was informed of that, I asked him about that. You asked him in what? And then he told me that's right. So I, this is one of those fucking situations again. 
Don't make the reporter saying, oh, that's right. So that means that he did receive it. Please don't go on the next fucking show and be like, oh, well, you got that wrong too. You missed well with a... Keep listening. I am. I'm dissecting each part. We need to dissect each part. We already listened to this already. We already did this already. This is the second time listening to this. I'm dissecting each part to get and extract any information I can to cross-reference his prior initial statements. So there's two text messages, or excuse me, a Facebook message and a text message. A Facebook message and a text message. So the family did message you. Yo, oh my God. Uh, and neither one he got before the police arrived at his home. All right. But the phone records that you have are... Cons neither before the police arrived at his home. I need to see timestamps. Nancy Grace would tear him apart. I'm already tearing him apart. I don't need Nancy Grace. I'm tearing him apart. Hold on. Or excuse me, a Facebook message and a text message. Okay. Uh, uh, and neither one he got before the police arrived at his home. Neither one he got before the police arrived to his home. So wait, you got text messages after the police arrived at his home? But you said you got numerous text messages. He got two texts. This is weird. Hold on. But you are still able to leave a voice message on this phone if he has a robo app. Really? Oh, wait a minute. After the police? Why, why would you need to if the police will contact the family? Why would they call? All right. But the phone records that you have are consistent with him. If you look at them, uh, the calls were early in the morning. Yeah, and we have His them. dad called at noon and he picked up. He didn't pick up any in the morning. He didn't pick up any in the evening when he would have been sleeping. There were no other phone calls. And the text messages, the same way. There's no outgoing text. Wait, wait, wait. Listen to what he said. Wait, 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 wait. Consistent with him. If you look at them, uh, the calls were early in the morning. Yeah, and we have his them. dad called at noon and he picked up. He didn't pick up any in the morning. He didn't pick up any in the evening when he would have been sleeping. There were no other phone calls. And the text messages... The same way, there's no outgoing text messages those two days. Right. Which, as you know, who can stay off their phone for two days straight unless you're principally sleeping and out of it? Stop it. Stop it. He in No way. You intentionally didn't call. Stop it. Or text. Stop it. Jungle Life with the five super chat. Emergency dispatch has been deleted for like two hours. Completely counted. Cover up. The emergency dispatch call. Hmm. Thank you, Jungle Life, for the five. I appreciate you so much. I'm going to look into that, Jungle Life. Thank you for telling me that. El Harley with a two super chat said, This lawyer lives by It Wasn't Me by Shaq. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> and you don't have your phone around you. Mm. So everything is consistent with what he's saying. Hey, thank you for watching. If you're trying to post links on YouTube or Facebook, it will not work at all. It's just not going to work. You need to directly message me or send it to Discord. Um, are you guys ready for more of this video? We are, we are, we, we're, 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 we are getting, we're getting. Thank you, Kenna. Anyone who's hiding something can stay off their phone. Smart guy. He's a smart guy. I can't say he is, but this is interesting. Safari is saying that this is a, this, yeah, this lawyer is a real joke. This lawyer got his degree from the circus because he thinks he's clowning us. Yo, YouTube is wild. YouTube is, yeah, YouTube, y'all need to relax. All right, let's, 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 guys, we're not done. We are not done. Sit back, relax, put your headphones on. Facebook, 10 more shares, my beautiful Facebook people. Let's keep it going, guys. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. I'm loving these messages you guys are sending. Guys, if you have any questions, ask them now in the chat. I will try to answer them on YouTube. Starry Night could try to answer them. She's, she's been doing a great job, Marty, uh, for the channel so far. Facebook, I'm reading, I'm reading messages, especially from my supporters. Like Lisa just said, 500 stars. Lisa, thank you so much. The 911 call has been released. Do you have it, Nov? 
Tess Johns, uh, Johnson. Um, I don't have that. If anybody has that, send it to me. I don't want to get it from a different YouTuber. I don't. If anyone has the 911 call, please, if you have it, I want to show it right now. Juanita with the $1 super chat. Thank you, Juanita. I appreciate you. Um, if you guys want to hear the 911 dispatch call, if you have it or first person to get it and send it to me, I'll absolutely give you credit. Absolutely. Michelle with the 100 stars. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, yes, because if you didn't see them leave, that's one thing. If you did see them leave, then it leads to questions of, well, where did you think they were going? Why didn't you go with them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the idea that he was unaware for days and not suspicious of what's happening in the backyard and supposedly as a dog, but the dog was sent to his parents' house or something. Why? Uh, somebody said they got it. So if you guys want to listen to it, that's great. DJ said, I want a refund for my Super Chats or I'm reporting you to YouTube. DJ, you can get a refund, no problem. But you got to talk to YouTube about that. Sorry about that. Everyone else is going through. Oh, DJ, if your Super Chat did not go through, then it didn't go through. I'm not, I, don't, I don't got it, DJ. I don't know why you're getting mad at me, DJ. I'm not responsible. I'm not YouTube. I'm the, I'm the content of the platform. Don't get mad at me. Go message YouTube, brother. All right. Take care. Have, have, matter of fact, have a good day. Take care, DJ. All right. Hello. Um, what's your Facebook? It is um, Chronicle. You can search it up. I have over 100K on, on Facebook. The lawyer got his degree from the circus. <laughs> Let's keep listening, guys. Let's focus. Let's focus. See them leave. That's one thing. If you did see them leave, then it leads to questions of, well, where did you think they were going? Why didn't you go with them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the idea that he was unaware for days and not suspicious of what's happening in the backyard and supposedly as a dog, but the dog was sent to his parents' house or something. Why? Let's bring in the reporter who was first on the scene looking into these details for Fox for KC. Reporter Malik Jackson. Malik, nice to meet you. Thank you for helping me out on this. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Chris. We appreciate it. All right. So now first, am I off in terms of my curiosity? Like, am I getting a wrong read on this or are we right about the open questions? I think you're exactly right. There's a lot of open questions and more importantly, things have been said that don't line up. And so when things don't line up, what are you going to naturally do? ask more questions. So mm. I think you're right on target with this one. All right. So in terms of what you're hearing from the authorities about what their assessment is to this point, my understanding is they're still waiting on toxicology. Um, I've been told that that takes a couple of weeks, but I thought that you got like a quick mix, um, like one or two days afterwards that gives them something to go on about cause of death. What are you being told about what they're looking at? Okay. He's going to tell us what they're looking at. Somebody says something on YouTube real quick. Hold on. Hold on, Nicole Holder. Nicole Holder said fifth guy confirmed the dogs were there. Nicole, where did you hear that from? I would love to hear that information. Nicole, you mind sharing with us where did you hear that information from? I sincerely would love to know where did you get that? No, like for real, I want to read that article, that report. Where did Alex say that at? I would love to know. It, that's important. That's important. That's very important. Christina with the thousand stars. Absolutely love you. Thank you for Christina. Thank you so much, Christina. We appreciate you over at Chronicle. Thank you. Holy chicken strips. Yes, a YouTuber? I don't want to hear. Nah. I, a, a YouTuber could say it. I don't want to hear it from a YouTuber or a TikToker. On Chronicle, I get it from a station source article from a uh, 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 somebody who is part of a uh, uh, media facility, who is uh, who you know got their press credentials from a ma media corporation. That's what I want to hear. Like I want to hear from like you know like Kumo, for instance. Like you know he's part of the media. Like, I I get stuff from articles and sources. I don't want to hear it from like another YouTuber or none of that. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'd rather go f to the direct source. So I can check that myself. You know what I'm saying? I like to, I'm, I'm very thorough that way. 
about what their assessment is to this point. My understanding is they're still waiting on toxicology. Um, I've been told that that takes a couple of weeks, but I thought that you got like a quick mix, um, like one or two days afterwards that gives them something to go on about cause of death. What are you being told about what they're looking at? So I spoke on the phone actually with the medical examiner that is dealing with this, uh, with this case. And basically when there's no obvious signs of foul play, like no gunshot wounds, no stab wounds, it takes longer because they need those toxicology reports. And they have to here send them out of state. So it takes six to eight weeks already. But depending on how complex the results are once they get them, it could stretch longer than that eight weeks. So we are in this waiting period right mm. now, and we really don't know when we're going to have these answers. And at the end of the day, Chris, and I know you understand this, there's three families. It's interesting. We don't know what happened. We all want to know, but there's three families you, right now right. that have no idea how their loved ones are gone. And the idea of having to wait maybe longer than eight weeks, it, it's frustrating for them. So what did the fifth guy have to say um, who was there, but not the whole time he left? What did he have to say? And Malik, let me know what uh, your two biggest open questions are, and I'll, I'll put them to the attorney for you uh, afterwards. So what does the fifth guy say? And good on you for getting an interview with him. And what are your questions? So the fifth guy responded basically saying, because we spoke with Jordan Willis's attorney, John Perserno, on Monday. And after we spoke, when we spoke with him, he told us that Jordan went to sleep. So it was a different story that he said in the statement on Saturday that he released. Yep. It was a different story that he told Ashley Banfield hours after we sat down with him. And we have it on tape. He said his client went. Oh, he changed his story hours, not the different day. Within the same day. <laughs> this guy is a fucking clown. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's no way he did that. There's no way this lawyer did this. There's no way. Oh my God. Chat, there's no way. Oh my God. Oh my God, Chad! Did you just hear that, guys? He changed his story within the same. He changed his story within the same, the same day on the same network. Oh my God, Eddie from YouTube with the super chat said, "You are doing a great job on this story. Keep up the good work, Eddie. I love you, man. Thank you, brother." Oh my God, Prisha and uh, Teresa with both two hundred stars on my Facebook. Teresa and, and Patricia Drew, thank you so much. You guys are great. There's no way I got to put that back questions are, and I'll put them to the attorney for you uh, afterwards. So what does the fifth guy say, and good on you for getting an interview with him, and what are your questions? So the fifth guy responded basically saying, because we spoke with Jordan Willis's attorney, John Perserno, on Monday, and after we spoke, when we spoke with him, he told us that Jordan went to sleep. So it was a different story that he said in the statement on Saturday that he released. It was a different story that he told Ashley Banfield hours after we sat down with him. And we have it on tape. He said his client went to sleep and so that there, these men were still in his house. So when I talked to him, my first question was, well, when you left the house, were, were they still alive? Were, were you the last person to see them alive? And he unequivocally said, that is untrue. I was not the last person there. I spoke with his attorney and his attorney told us, you know, he was there until a little after midnight. And when he left, all of these men, all four men, so the three victims and Jordan Willis, they were awake, they were there, and they were watching Jeopardy on TV. Um, my questions are, Chris, at this point are simply, so at first we were told he only received messages through Facebook, mm. okay? Well, then once we hunted down the person Number five, this mystery man, then that changed because when we talked to him, he said, yes, through his attorney, that he texted Jordan on Tuesday because he had received text from Clayton McGinney's fiance and Ricky Johnson's mom. So he had received text. So he inquired to Jordan asking, you know, about the whereabouts. And those so weren't why answered. Did that Exactly. Yeah. So why if you only got a Facebook message and then now it's, oh, I got text messages. And right. then my other question. Oh, shit. Y'all, he's leaving out things. You guys get it? 
Oh my God. Everybody chat, he's leaving out things. So it's, it's kind of like, okay, let me give an example. It's kind of like, um, let's say, I can't give an, an, an analogy. Let's say that I dropped this bottle, right? Boom, I dropped it. This glass bottle of water. Boom. And I'm like, let's say, give me somebody in the chat. Give me Ray. Ray said, Ray's comment was like, better than Nancy Grace. Keep it up, brother. Ray, I appreciate you. Ray said, hey, no. Why did you drop this? What happened to the glass bottle? Why did it drop? I'm be like, oh, I don't know. I just, I found it like that. And then they're like, but why did it break? What happened? I said, I don't know. It's, it's just, I found, it's, it's just, it broke. And then Ray's like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I buy a new one. And later, Ray reviewed the footage and he's like, no, but I saw you tip over the bottle. And I'm like, oh yeah, I tipped it over. I was just saying to you that I, that I just like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just so happened to find it. It's kind of like the lawyer dancing around the question of the text messages. You get it? Like, it's like when you ask somebody a question, you don't have to ask, you don't have to say exactly what happened, but you can say a round of what happened. That's exactly what he's saying. He's saying that he, like he didn't, he didn't tell us that he didn't have to tell us of, about a specific text message. He only told us about a Facebook message or another message, not Alex's message. He didn't tell us directly what he, we wanted to know. You kind of, you know, I can't give it a good, that was a poor analogy. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to find a good analogy. Like he didn't tell us, fuck, what is the word? Like he left things out in, on purpose. Like he, he left things out. He left things out. That is, oh shit. This case is wildin'. Things are, Chris, at Listen. this point are simply, so at first we were told he only received messages through Facebook, mm. okay? Well, then once we hunted down the person, number five, this mystery man. You see, once, you see, that's the analogy. Once they hunt down Alex, dot, 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 listen. Then that changed because when we talked to him, he said, yes, through his attorney, that he texted Jordan on Tuesday because he had received text from Clayton McGinney's fiance and Ricky Johnson's mom. Boom! When they said that, now Willis is like, oh, yeah, I received text messages from bada, bada, bada. Which, again, guys, again, I, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is I cannot say legally Willis is lying and he's guilty. I have to make sure I have to say that every podcast, okay? I'm not saying that legally. I, in my opinion, this, this is all speculation, my opinion, this whole entire podcast. I have to say this legally, you know? Yeah, this is, yeah. Patricia June with the 2305 stars. Holy chicken strips. You get the horns, Patricia June. Thank you so much. Patricia! Thank you. We appreciate you over a Chronicle. Mary Bell with the 100 stars says, your enthusiasm is amazing. Keep up the good work. Congratulations on reaching your goals. Thank you, Mary Bell. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys are incre incredible. Willis probably deleted the messages. It'll still show up on the phone records. Can somebody, can I ask you guys a question? In phone records, you can't delete that. I don't think you can, right? You can't, right? You can't delete. Can, can somebody tell me that? Candy Shop 21, welcome to the Chronicle Club. You just joined the membership. Enjoy your perks, your status, your crown, and your priority. You get a whole bunch of perks. Congratulations. And somebody else joined. BRX, MarX, welcome to the Chronicle family. Enjoy your perks as well. And thank you for joining the Chronicle Club. Somebody said, not in the phone. You cannot delete it. Can, okay. Okay. Everyone is saying that you cannot. Look, look at YouTube. YouTube and Facebook are both saying it. They said that you cannot delete phone records. You can delete, but not erase. Ooh, that's okay. Ooh, I like those words. Ooh. Oh, I, odorless? I like that. You can delete, but not erase. That's a very good way to, of, of putting that. Okay, now I'm understanding you guys. Okay, okay, I'm understanding, I'm understanding. Hard to keep track of the lies, Ray said, right, Ray? Uh, 
member Kathy D with the crown says, you can get a warrant for records from the phone company. Correct. I, I believe that's called a subpoena, right? You subpoena the phone. Is that correct as well? Remember, members, you get priority. You remember that. Like your, lane, your, your, your messages light up. Like, remember that. If you got a crown over at Facebook or YouTube, type your message. I, I can read it to everyone. It lights up. No, you can't. And if you have AT&T, you can see your records online. Mm. Candy Shop says, I'm excited to be part of the membership. You are so welcome. Of course, you're part of the family. All right, let's continue. This is ridiculous. This story is ridiculous. He texted Jordan on Tuesday because he had received text from Clayton McGinney's fiance and Ricky Johnson's mom. So he had received text. So he inquired to Jordan asking, you know, about the whereabouts. And those so weren't why answered. Did that exactly. Yeah. So why if you only got a Facebook message and then now it's, oh, I got text messages. And right. then my other question, I think it's your question, which is, okay, so did he escort them to the door? Was he asleep? And when did he see them right. exit? Because the first statement he says, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't see them exit the house. Right. And then in the same paragraph, it says, oh, actually, the last time he saw them right. is when. They exited the house. All right, so, and I'm going to go to... In the same paragraph, what a contradiction, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give this guy a round of applause and this guy a round of applause. Congratulations on your contradiction. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Now you're wondering why we people suspect you. It's because of this reason. You made yourself look like a fool. You got to stop doing that. Because you didn't do it more than once. You did it twice. You did it three times, if anything. And you have that lawyer that's representing you that's doing that for you. It ain't me. You can't, you, hey, don't, 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 don't blame the messenger. Thank you for your dedication. Candy Shop. Oh my God. Candy Shop did a membership and now a super chat. Candy Shop, thank you so much. Oh, you did two. Candy Shop with a four. Thank you. Maybe the fifth guy was involved. I don't, I can't, I cannot say for a fact. I don't know. I cannot say for a fact, guys, but this story is ridiculous. It's just getting worse. I told you, I told you, it's getting worse every day. Every day is getting worse. Now look what we just found out. Look what we just found out, ladies and gentlemen. Look what we just found out. Break, but I, I just want to ask you this. I'll, I'll talk to the lawyer on the other side of the break. But uh, did the guy number five give you any indication of how hard they were partying and what they were doing? No, he didn't give us any indication of that. And we, when we talked to his attorney, when I talked to Perserno, that is the a question that no one seems to want to answer. What were they doing? Were there drugs involved? How much alcohol was right. involved? Those are just questions that at this point we haven't been able to get the answers to. But, you know, as we've done all along, if you don't tell us, guess what? We're going to go out there and we're going to find them. Hey, thank you for watching. Out of all the questions, guys, that is the main. Everybody, everybody, listen up. Attention, everybody, listen up. Everybody, listen up. Listen up. Out of the whole entire thing, ladies and gentlemen, that is the number one question that no one wants to answer. Not Alex, not Willis, and not their lawyers. How hard did you party? No comment. Okay, who left first? Oh, he left first. No, he left first. No, I left first. No, no, no. What about the drugs? No, no comment. Did you watch the Chief Games or Jeopardy? Wait, yes, the Chief Games. No, I watched Jeopardy. No, wait a minute, but I watched it. And you left, but then when I saw you go to bed, no, I'm finna What about the drugs? Oh, no, no comment. Who supplied the drugs, ladies and gentlemen? Who supplied the drugs, ladies and gentlemen? Where did the drugs come from? Why is it that they three are gone, but Willis and his fifth guy is still alive? I would never understand that. I would never understand this. 
This is the full 10 minute interview. Nagini, 36. Harrington, 37. Ricky. This came out today, guys. Her came child out today. Ended up came out Johnson, today. 38. Clayton McGinney, 36. The father of one of the men who was found dead in the yard, Ricky Johnson Sr., okay, joins us now. I'm very sorry to meet you under these circumstances. Uh, I know speaking isn't the easiest thing for you to do, but everybody's going to understand what your message is on this story, Ricky. I promise you that. What do you believe happened to your son? I believe that they were drugged in some kind of drug, and then they were drugged outside and left in the snow to die. And uh, I don't know why. I don't know what went on, but I believe that because you can't have three grown men like that laying in the backyard supposedly freezing to death. Well, they would have kicked the doors in and gotten out. So I really believe they were drugged and then laid back there and he didn't call the police for two days. Very weird yeah. thing to do. Uh, we'd have to understand motive, but the first question is, uh, because it's just, it, it, you have to admit, that's a very bizarre thing to do if you're trying to separate yourself from a criminal activity. You're putting them Does anybody have, people are saying that they have the, uh, they have the dispatch call. Does I, typically I find all my links, all of them. I find all my sources. This I, demonic man. I did. In your own. Your Hold on, guys. I don't know why Facebook. Thinking she had found. Hold on. Um, but what? On the man of Facebook, her dreams. like, automatically she plays things, and it's ridiculous. Hold on. Um, if you have that, can you please send it to me on Facebook or Discord? I would appreciate that very much. Um, I want to get that dispatch call if it's authentic. I don't want to say that it's not, but I want to get I want to get it the the correct one. I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the facts. All right. Um, we're gonna get back to this interview. Uh, I'm just I paused it to let you guys know that honestly, I just want to say thank you. It's 11:54 Eastern time, and you guys are taking the time out of your day to watch me. And I don't think I watch a lot of different podcasters or TikTokers. People never stop to be grateful for what they have and just say thank you. So I just, I just want to say that to you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for spending this moment of your life with me. And I just want to be grateful for what I have. And um, um, you, are you are giving me your time to, to do this case. So... Um, I just want to be thankful. You know, it's nighttime, so I just, I just, know, I want you to know that, right? That's all. Was your son someone who abused drugs? I'm sorry to ask the question. I, I know you just lost him, but it's something that we'd have to know. I don't believe he abused drugs. I know he did some drugs. I don't know what time. Uh I know he did some drugs. Ah, this is getting more interesting. Okay, I know that he did drugs, but he wasn't a dr like a drug addict or nothing. Okay. Uh, but I don't believe he was abusing. He didn't have to go to rehab or anything like that. So, you know, I think they were partying and Everybody did. I understand. And why do you believe that the friend Willis, uh, do you know him? Do you know this Jordan Willis? No. no. Never met him. Never heard anything about him from Ricky. Another guy that never heard of Willis. Number four, ladies and gentlemen. I told you that's, that's something that nobody's paying attention to. Who said that? Laylee? Kaylee? The brother? The father? From different people. <laughs> what did I say? I'm not saying that he never met them or don't know them. But if you're best friends, best friends with someone, how the fuck you don't know about this guy? I have a best friend, Kenny, 
for we've been best friends for what? what? I would say seven years, eight years. Half my family knows about him. The other half, I don't talk to them. How the hell does your father doesn't know about your best friend? Father, father, Faja, father. No, nothing. Uh, the only thing I ever heard was when he said the guy wasn't quite right. He said men leave a little off. I think you just said that your son had said that he wasn't quite right, that he was something off about him. You remembered Ricky yeah. saying that, but obviously he was still cool hanging out with him because that's where he was at the house that night. Right. Yeah, so all three of them went over there. All right. And just one last question for you. And know that until this is solved, we'll stay on it. We're always a phone call away. OK, um, so that we're here as you get more information. What are the police telling you right now? We won't even go do it. We called probably 15 times. They don't return a call. I called the sheriff. He had to return my call. Really? About Bernie. Uh, he's on it now. So we did no, my my uh, guess is, Ricky, you're going to get some attention when they know. Uh, I mean, look, you've been talking to the media already, but uh, we're going to start calling the police and try to find out. I mean, that's part of the job is being in touch with the victims' families. A lot of this doesn't make sense. I, I'm not questioning uh, your uh, credibility. I'm saying the story doesn't make sense. So, Ricky Johnson, we're on it. Uh, and I'm very sorry for the loss to your family. And we're a phone call away. Really, really appreciate all the help you can give us. All right. Ricky Johnson Sr., thank you very much. Again, condolences to your family. Um, I told you, it doesn't make sense, this situation, right? And that <laughs> I love this guy so fucking cool, bro. I fucking love this guy so much. He's like, I told you, it doesn't make any sense. You see, he's kind of like, he, he kind of reminds me of me when reporting stuff. We come out of our element. You see, reporters have to be professional. And we're live. All right. Well, Jonathan, I'm here live right now where you see a vehicle has, they all sound robotic, but Kumo reminds me of myself where I'm a podcaster. I'm just me. I'm not robotic. And he kind of like, he's just out there. He wants to, like, if he seek bullshit, he's going to call it. And that's exactly what I, it's, it's good. You know, help we need more people like this. All right. Ricky Johnson Sr., thank you very much. Again, condolences to your family. Um, I told you, it doesn't make sense, this situation, right? And that's weird for the police. I mean, you know, you call him 15 times, he's upset. His father, he just lost his son. Very unusual for a department to not be in touch. All right, now let's flip it to the other side. The lawyer for Jordan Willis, he's the guy who lives in the house who supposedly hosted this watch party. There have been some different stories, though. So let's bring in counsel uh, John Paserno. Uh, it's good to have you. Did I say your name right? You did. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Okay, so we saw this part already. Uh, I, I don't want to be, you know, repetitive here already. Um, let me go to the ending because it's probably an extra part that we did not. Not have been so quick to say there was no foul play involved and that this is not a homicide investigation. So that simply didn't happen. Um, and I understand they're hurting and they want to lash out at people. Um, but a good close friend of your sons and loved one is not the person to lash out at. I understand your perspective. Please extend the invitation with your assistance to your client. Uh, nothing's as compelling as the person involved themselves, but I appreciate you uh, correcting the record and putting out uh, his position on these uh, very troubling questions because this situation just doesn't make sense. Um, counsel, no, and Chris, I, yes. I would tell you that once the, once the uh, autopsy has been concluded, um, at that time, I think it would be an appropriate time for all of us to talk again. I'm, I'm happy to have you on. It's an open invitation. This lawyer seems so confident, everybody. This lawyer is so confident. You know? This lawyer is very confident, guys. I don't know. All right. We have another exclusive interview with a lawyer today. Uh, he did another one. He, he, he did another one. You guys, uh, you guys want to see this? It's, it's, it's another one. Is Amanda...